My name is David Daniel Ball and these are the headlines for Sunday the 12th of April 2009. Bikey gang war erupts in prison. Thailand protests force Rudd home. Saffron Good Friday stunt claimed to be over the top. No police at overdose rave party. New laws to stop predatory lending. Emirates jet close to major aviation disaster, says report. Teacher arrested over suitcase murder. Thieves threaten teens with guns. UK police quiz terror suspects. And in comments from Piers Ackerman, Easter Bunny Rudd walks on eggshells. Easter is the traditional season of renewal in the Christian faith, but this year, growing unemployment will mean increasing numbers of Australians find little to celebrate. Well, Piers, the bill hasn't been presented to the Australian people yet, but it will eventually have to be paid. Some big-time journals are still covering for Rudd, so that Rudd's abysmal treatment of a RAF person is reported as being like the time Downer fell, or someone else pipes up they think Rudd's cat is cute. With reporting that partisan that bad, it is no wonder that many are confused. It should not be forgotten that Hitler came to power when some people thought he had valid ideas on management. I'm not likening Rudd to Hitler, but the blind spot of the press seems to have him does not bode well. Whitlam, Hawke and Keating were returned as Prime Ministers at election. We must acknowledge the mistakes as well as any successes. At the moment, it seems that mistakes are reported as successes. Bundeschen Bat? It's nearly May, and that means Vanity Fair's annual green issue. For the past three years, the May edition of this chokingly smug Manhattan celebrity worship rag has been dedicated to matters environmental, writes Tim Blair. More for you there at the link. Hit them hard. Unarmed crew aboard the Marisk, Alabama, drew criticism for fighting back against pirates who boarded their vessel off Somalia's coast. Here's how pirates were dealt with in 1849. About 400 have been killed and the rest dispersed without resource. By contrast, modern sailors are encouraged to use firearms against pirates only as a final resort. And an update, Somali pirates have captured an Italian-flagged U.S. tug and its 16-strong crew today. Calling all day, Chicago woman Noor Hadid faces a first-degree murder charge following the beating death of her two-year-old niece. But according to her husband, an even graver crime is being committed. Orland Park police detectives say the 26-year-old Muslim woman was treated as any other suspect in a murder probe would be, and they did not intend to humiliate her when they photographed her Sunday without her headscarf and wearing only a skimpy top. Aladdin claims police are really going to be in big trouble for releasing scarfless images to the press. It is against our religion. We do not do this in our culture, Aladdin said. People have been calling me about this all day. Red-shirted people... Kevin Rudd is returning from Thailand following cancellation of the ASEAN summit. Protesters clad in red and black and carrying weapons stormed the venue in Pattaya. More for you there at the link. Putting the ice on the warming believers by Andrew Bolt. Join Alaska's famous Nanana Ice Classic run each year since 1917. And guess when the tripod finally falls through the frozen Tanana River. This should be a doddle for global warming believers since the record for the earliest ice breakup is April the 20th and it's already April the 12th. Mind you, skeptics might note that the record was set in 1940 and that the world has cooled, not warmed in recent years. Natalie, the talent from nowhere to everywhere and an astonishing reach from a girl working from a desk in her bedroom with nothing but her wit, sass and YouTube. From her parents' home in Western Sydney, Natalie Tran, Australia's queen of the YouTube, has proven time and again that titillation is not a prerequisite to internet fame. With more than 150,000 subscribers to her YouTube channel, Tran22 is easily the most subscribed YouTube user in Australia, while globally she ranks 37th. The 118 videos she's created over two years have amassed 64 million views, making her the most viewed Australian YouTube user of all time, more popular on the site than even ACDC, whose videos have attracted 53 million views. While not quite only her wit, sass, and YouTube, because this true is, but not exactly, Tran has a shrewd titillation. But isn't it mysterious and exciting that a young student on her own can manage to hit the button of hundreds of thousands of YouTube viewers in a way that media companies, the communications professionals, desperately try but fail? 
I'm guessing that integrity and not just smarts and looks have a lot to do with it, and doing it alone and without sponsorship only helps. And she sings. Obama has a gun, dare he use it, Barack Obama now has a mini crisis of strength, one which talking alone cannot solve. Somali pirates have captured a U.S. tug and its 16-strong crew. A Kenyan official reported on Saturday, hours after another group holding U.S. captain hostage, warned against any attempts to free him. Ten of the 16 crew are Italians. Italy's foreign ministry said in a statement without giving any details. Is this Obama's Jimmy Carter moment? The Italians, too, have a problem. The danger is that their solution will be like the one they used to free a hostage in Iraq, reaching not for a gun, but a wallet. And the dithering begins. Senior Obama administration officials are debating how to address a potential terrorist threat to U.S. interests from a Somali extremist group, with some in the military advocating strikes against its training camps, but many officials maintain that uncertainty about the intentions of the Al-Shabaab organization dictates a more patient, non-military approach. Some of the Defense Department have been frustrated by what they see as a failure to act. Why are Rudd's tough measures all sugar? Chris Berg warns that Kevin Rudd is just making it up as he goes along. And it isn't a little dubious that the best way to fix the crisis just happens to be $900 delivered straight into the bank accounts of almost every Australian voter? Wouldn't you be more convinced that the government was trying its hardest if they thought they had to do something that the electorate absolutely hated? I'd have a lot more faith in Rudd's healing powers if he believed he had to raise taxes massively on working families or sympathetic pensioners to save the economy. You know, something that really hurt his poll numbers. If he announced he needed to slaughter one cute puppy every day until toxic debt was completely eliminated, he'd be cuckoo, but at least you'd know he was trying. And an update, John Roscombe sees in Rudd a Whitlamite plus billions. Rudd can now mix it with the best of them. He's just resided over a government that's got 20% bigger. According to Treasury's own calculations, spending by the federal government will have gone from just over 23% of gross domestic product in 2007-8 to about 28% in this financial year. Saying this growth is of Whitlamesque proportions is not hyperbole. It is a statement that's literally true. Indeed, depending upon how you measure it, government is now growing faster than it did in 72 to 75. Who will rid New South Wales of these troublesome pests? Just how much more proof do New South Wales voters need of how low they've been brought by Labour? School playgrounds have been added to the long list of public assets the cash-strapped New South Wales government is desperately trying to sell off to pay public servants' wages. Bikies rule, okay. Why are the police and VCAT so easy on outlaw bikies and so hard on the lawful? A Victorian council lost its fight to stop two rival bikie gangs setting up in the same suburb after police apparently raised no objections. Script being followed, Team America said it already the five permanent UN Security Council members in Japan agreed Saturday on a draft statement condemning North Korea's missile launch and are in favor of fresh sanctions against the country, diplomats said. It is a text which sends out, as we intended, a clear message to North Korea expressing our disagreement with what happened, he said. And warning, video contains prime ministerial language. Rudd to act, best stimulus of all. Kevin Rudd has got billions of dollars for pink bats, for white elephant on a broadband plan, in cash handouts that don't work, to car makers for more of what we aren't buying. And for yet another stimulus package of spend, spend, spend. But he's run out of money for this. Sabella Zagopoulos is a gorgeous $70,000 miracle that we all helped to create. The 13-month-old was conceived after a mother forklift driver, Theona Zagopoulos, endured 10 cycles of IVF at a personal cost of $30,000. Now, as the federal government scrapes for savings ahead of May 12th budgets, looking again at publicly funded IVF and obstetric services, which cost taxpayers $141 million a year through its safety net scheme, the joke is that if you really want to get people buying more stuff to stimulate the economy, give them a baby. Nothing sure. Green hypocrites, and there's plenty of examples there for you at the link. Send it by Pigeon instead. How patient is Nick Minchin with the ABC? You can see it at the link. Reporting Rudd. So Kevin Rudd's stimulus packages aren't saving us. Uh, more there for you at the link with Laurie Oaks and Malcolm Farr. Really make him look good. Rudd's next promise, a Ferrari in every garage. Defense Minister Homeless as well as Clueless. Peter Roth, who's really to blame for the subprime mess. James P. Pinkerton, Obama is dead wrong on nuclear weapons. And Mark Joseph, guess what Mr. Obama? Christianity continues to put its stamp on our country.